Good morning, folks. It's about 7.30 and 22 degrees this morning. And I thought I would do an update on the progress of my personal cattle. Okay, I'm going to start off with Miley, our bottle fed calf from last year. Um, Miley, I think, just turned a year. Um, Miley is supposed to be full blooded shorthorn, but she's starting to get some black markings on her face, which maybe thinks she has a little bit of jersey or something in her. Um, if you're very familiar at all with the shorthorns, I would love to hear your input on what you think. Um, I think Miley's gaining quite nice. She's starting to get some nice girth to her, and uh, I'm really happy with that. Um, I haven't really seen any major concerns with Miley. Um, she's very easy to work. Um, she's very used to me since I bottle fed her. To date, Miley has had no vaccines or medications of any sort. I think that was a little bit dramatic, Miley. From now we'll go over here and check out Casey, my other bottle fed calf. Okay, this is Casey, our baldy. In case you're not aware, a baldy is a Hereford Angus cross. Casey is just a little bit older than Miley, just by a few months. But if you put them side by side, I actually think Miley's a little bit bigger. She's putting on more weight, and she shows that. Um, Casey has had no vaccines or medications to this point. But one thing I'd like to point out about Casey is back in the early spring, Casey started to get some warts on her end of her muzzle, by her nose, and on the side of her neck. I started to ask some questions about this on uh, the grass-fed page or the grass-fed group on Facebook. I had a few suggestions given to me, and I'm gonna tell you what they are. The first suggestion that was given to me was to take the wart, cut a piece off, and feed it back to her. Um, what they were saying that would do is it would let the body know there's a problem, and from there the body would heal it. Other people were saying, just simply cut it, let it bleed. When it starts to bleed, the body won't recognize that it's there, and it'll fix the problem. I wasn't uh, by any means wanting to go out there and just grab Casey and cut it off. Um, the one on her neck got at the very least the size of a golf ball. It was looking pretty pretty bad. Um, well one day I moved him into a paddock with some locust trees, some black locusts, and in case you're not aware the black locust trees do have thorns. Cattle like to eat the leaves off the black locusts, and then when they get their bellies full, they like to rub on them. And I'm just going to guess, because I didn't see it happen, but that's what Casey did. She got her belly full, she went over to the locust tree, and she rubbed that huge growth on her neck up and down that thorny tree. I returned that evening to find blood all over the side of Casey's neck, and what looked like minced meat hanging off the side of her neck where she just ripped that growth wide open. I ran to the front of the farm and grabbed some uh, Crystal Creek uh, wound spray and I sprayed her down. She didn't much like that. I imagine it did sting a little bit. But I would like to say now that uh, the people were 100% correct. I'm going to take you in here a little closer and I'm going to show you. Casey has cleared up 100% and has absolutely no growth on her. None. The growth was right here on the side of her neck and on this side of her muzzle, which you can see is not there anymore. So if you come across warts, keep this little trick in mind. As long as it bleeds, most of the time, it's gonna heal itself. So that's Casey. And you might remember the two bread cows that I bought last year. Well, unfortunately, I'm sad to say that one of them passed away. But this is her calf. If you remember, I shared a video on him being born. He's since been castrated and officially is a steer. 
he's gaining quite nicely and getting very thick. Let me explain a little bit about his mom and why she passed. Last year when I purchased his mom, already bred, I had no knowledge at all on purchasing cows, what to look for, and how people were just going to straight up lie to you about the information they're telling you about their cattle as they sell them to you. I guess it's kind of common sense. I should have known. It's like buying a car. But I didn't think it would be that way. Well, what happened was we were told his mom was four years old when we purchased her. After uh, a few weeks of observing his mom eat, I was starting to think maybe she was having trouble eating, so we called in the vet. The vet looked at her teeth, and he said, I hate to tell you, but you could put a one in front of that four. That's about how old she is. She's closer to 14. So that explained why she was having so much trouble eating and why she was starting to lose weight. You know, at the time, she was pregnant. The baby's taken a lot of energy from her. And that wasn't helping the case with her teeth and this trouble gaining weight. So I started to offer his mom some alfalfa pellets, and that worked great for about two days. See, on the third day, I came up and found his mom laying in the pasture all bloated. Me being fairly new, um, bloat was like, wow, what do I do? I immediately did some research on my phone and found out I needed to take a tube and get it down in her room and, and let some of that air escape. So that's what I did. I sat out here in the pasture on a cold day trying for a few hours to get some air out of her. Um, I had never done anything like this. It was my first attempt, but you know, it's my responsibility when you take on something like this. You can't just do half of the work. You gotta be there to do it all. So I was going to give it my all, and I tried my very best to get air out of that girl. And a lot of air did come out of her, but it just wasn't enough. So about noon that day, we called the vet. The vet's an hour away. Well, he shows up. He sees her laying on her side. He said, the first thing we need to do is get her, get her set back up. So we set her back up. He gives her some uh, frothy bloat medication. And uh, he proceeds to try and relieve some air out of her with the hose. And he does. He does get some air out of her. He tells me uh, before he leaves, I'm not going to lie to you. When, when somebody's been laying down that long, it's not good. Especially when they've got that much age to them. But I'm going to wish you the best, and if there's anything else I can do, give me a call. And he left. The next morning I come up here, do my morning chores, and it was a heartbreaker, folks. I ain't going to lie to you. I found this little guy laying next to his mom who had passed overnight. He was bawling. He's hungry. Why ain't mom moving? That was a very hard day. And that was one of them days that's going to stick with me for a long, long time. So I did what I had to do. I got Mama out of there and, and I buried her. And for the next little bit, I tried to get this guy on a bottle. He did not want anything to do with a fake rubber nipple. So I tried to mix up some substitute milk and stick it in a bowl. You didn't want anything to do with that either, did you? Nope. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give him some alfalfa pellets. But I'm going to start with a really small dose because I think that's what caused his mom to pass as I gave her too much when her stomach wasn't used to alfalfa pellets. See, I should have started off with really small doses for four or five days, maybe a week, and then slowly increased it. But I didn't know that. So that's what I did with him. I gave him like a handful for about five days. And then I slowly increased it until the grass started to grow. Once we got into spring and we had grass, I slowly started to wean him off of it. 
Because see, once we started to get grass, we're grazing the farm. We're not stuck in the sacrifice pasture anymore. We're moving around. So that made it a little bit trickier to get out in the paddocks with this man and all these other cattle and try and only feed one alfalfa pellet. So I knew it was a move that I was going to have to make. And you can look at this young man right now. He is a good looking boy. He's very gentle, and I think I think now I'm officially one of his parents. <laughs> There's Miley. Kind of give you an idea of the two side by side. So that's the little man. As you can see, he's a January 9th baby. <laughs> We've bonded quite well with the situation we were dealt. Haven't we, little buddy? I'm gonna miss that little turd in a year when he has to be processed. Good little man right there. Okay, so that's little man, Ariel's baby. The next one I wanna go over is Daisy. Daisy's the black Angus that we bought at the same time as Ariel, the Sim. They were both bred. Right there is Daisy with the mouthful. Looking good. Daisy actually just came back with two other of my uh, head from getting bread to a pharaoh bowl. Now, I didn't share a video on it. I got busy on the farm. Things happen, you know. Here's Daisy. This is Daisy's baby right here. She's a March baby. And she just came back with Mama from the trip of getting bread. They've been gone for about two months. They went roughly 60 miles away. And they're looking very good. So about late summer next year, Daisy ought to drop me a little pharaoh calf. Um, now as far as Daisy, I don't know her true age. I'm going to guess she's 10 years, somewhere in there. And as far as this little one here of hers... In March, she will be a year. She has had no medications or vaccines at all at this point. As you can see, I never even tagged her ear. Looking very good, though. Now, in February of last year, and I never made a video on it, we bought two more head of cattle. Um, at the time, in February, they were roughly 10 months old. So... Here's one of them, a limousine Angus Cross. This particular one I call red, even though she's not all red. This is one of my head that's very vocal when you show up in the morning or any time of the day. She's also a very good follower when it's time to move. Um, she's got a very nice build to her. I really like her. This is one of the uh, heifers that I just had bred, first time heifer, that just came back with Daisy. She will also be dropping a pharaoh calf for me in late summer. Oh, Red, you're a good girl. I don't see anything about Red that I really just can say that's negative. Very good girl. The other limousine Angus Cross we purchased there's going to be this black and white one here with horns. Um, at the time, I didn't give the horns any thought. A few months later, the guy I custom grazed for, he came down to either drop off some cattle or pick them up, I can't remember, and he saw her. What's your plans for the one with the horns? I said, I'd like to put her in my breeding program. Oh... He said, I really would rather you not. I said, why is that? He says, it's my experience that cows with horns, maybe not now when they're young, but when they get older, they roll the hay feeder. They pick and choose who's going to eat beside of them and where they're going to eat. And without anybody else having horns to defend themselves, I would just rather you avoid that. 
That was kind of disappointing to me because she's a really, really docile girl. I can walk up right now and pet her on the head and she will stand there and grind her head into my fingers as a scratcher. She's very thick. And that was one of the other things he pointed out to me. Um, he says, have you really looked at her? Look how big bone she is. Look at her legs. And you know, he's right. You know, her legs, and it's going to be hard to tell by the camera, but that front leg right there where it's white and black is probably, I would bet you it's the size of a two liter in diameter. So he was wanting me to get rid of her. So, you know, do I sell her? What do I do? I'm stuck with this decision. So I chewed on that for a couple of days and I called him back. I said, hey, you know, you've got some uh, pretty nice cattle in your herd here that I'm managing. What would be the chances that you would uh, just trade me since you're going to process out? He says, you know, it's funny you say that because I was going to call you this evening with the same idea. So this girl is no longer mine. Let's go find the one I traded for. Okay, the one that I traded for is an Angus Gelby Cross. And if you're not familiar with Gelby, which was new to me, step forward, girl. Girls, can I get in there? Girls? Well, this is her butt. I'll pull up some pictures here as I kind of give you the rundown on her. Um, she's a Gelby Angus cross. Um, she was sired by Johnny B. Good's son. So she's got a pretty decent pedigree behind her. Um, I was fortunate because, you know, when I get the cattle from the guy I graze for, I also get the contact information of the people that's going to be delivering them and where they come from. So I was able to take her ear tag number, go through my paperwork, and actually call the guy that raised her. I actually had a few picked out in the mix. This was one of them. And I said, if you were to pick one of these to breed from, which would you choose? And he helped me pick out this girl. But you can see she's got a nice rump on her. So, this girl, very, very docile, easy to work, calm, doesn't get excited. That's what I like. She, uh, not super tall, getting some thickness to her, and I really like that. And she is the third one in the mix to come back that just got bred to the Pharaoh Bull. So, she'll also be dropping me a calf in late summer. And right now we're back at my house, and we're not on the leased farm. And we've got Norm, my Jersey Bull. He was born in March. He was He's a March baby of this year. Um, the guy that we bought the limo Angus cross from contacted me in the spring of this year and said, I have a, a little Jersey Bull calf if you wanted to try and, and raise a few of them. And I said, uh, you know, I'd take him off your hands just to give him a shot and see what they're all about. So this is Norman. And like I say, we're back here at my house. Um, I didn't have any fence or pasture at all until I got him. And then I had to immediately go to work putting in some fence. So I've got about an acre right here fenced off. And my hopes are, and my plans, is to have uh, a couple head here plan to get another or maybe a couple goats or something and start building some fertility. Um, I also want to extend the pasture, make it a little longer, and then maybe even talk to the neighbor about leasing some of their land that they don't do anything with. And I'd like to start building some fertility here in case things don't work out at the farm long term. I have a place to bring my herd back to. So Norm is one of them and uh, like I say I don't really know his full plan yet but he is still full bull calf um, I'm getting to the point now where I've either got to make the decision or we got to castrate him process him out 
Um, is there even a market for Jersey Bulls? I don't know. Um, it's all new to me, so I'm learning as I go. Um, Norm's starting to get a couple little horns poking out of his head. He ain't nothing too bad. He's a pretty docile little boy there for being a big bad bull. And it's just a little shelter I threw up for him. He don't have a, a herd to help keep him warm. Um, he don't have any companions. His companions consist of my ducks and chickens running around here at the homestead. So, for that reason, I wanted to give him a little place to get in out of the weather. So I threw him up his little hoop house. Norm has had absolutely no medications or antibiotics. He's had no vaccines. Um, when I first got Norm, he was on bottle. Um, he got pneumonia. And I did a little bit of research and I found some organic treatments for different calf illnesses. And the one I went with was adding garlic and echinacea to his milk. Um, I picked him up at the local herbal store and I started adding them to his milk. And would you believe within a week the pneumonia had completely cleared up and he's been healthy ever since. So I haven't needed any medications, have we Norm? So that is a rundown on my cattle and how they are progressing. I think they're uh, they're doing very well. Um, the Angus limo cross, um, where they come from, they were fed a little bit of grain up until the time they got here. Now, if you go back and, and look at the pictures of them again, it's hard to believe that they look as good as they do when the moment they dropped here, grain fell off of their diet. It no longer happened. It was hay, grass, that's it. That's your choices. And they still look good. So I'm very happy with that purchase. The bottle calves, I think I've learned a little bit of something there. Bottle calves take a little bit longer because you're feeding them substitute. They're not getting mama's milk, which is so much more healthier. So when I look at my calf from Daisy and compare it to my bottle calves, there is just a huge difference. So in the future, I'm going to be reluctant to buy bottle calves unless I can just get an excellent deal on them. But that's just my two cents. You know, you might look at it differently. Um, if you have any questions or comments um, about any of my cattle, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer you. If you have any input you would like to share, please leave that in the comments below. It would surely be appreciated. Um, Thanks for watching, Grazing Acres Farms, and if you like the video, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it to YouTube search ranks, and more farmers can see it. Thanks again, folks.